Hello everyone, this is Marcus McFarlane, Family and Consumer Sciences Agent with NC Cooperative Extension in Union County. And this is FCS at Home. Let me tell you all, I love fall. It's one of my favorite seasons because it starts getting so much more cooler and there's so much good food that you get to try. It's such warm, comforting food that's perfect for the autumn time. And so today, we're going to do two different types of soups. And I love soup because it's warm, it's hearty, and it's perfect for just a simple, chilly, cold autumn day washing the leaves fall. But what's the best thing about these soups is that we're going to talk a little bit about the different ways you can preserve your soups. So first, we're going to start off by making a butternut squash soup. This will be made into a lovely puree with um, our ingredients including butternut squash, uh, green apples, so we're going to use Granny Smith apples because it's going to give it a little bit of a tart sweetness. Um, onion, white onion, a little bit of carrot, and then garlic and some wonderful seasonings like um, cayenne pepper, salt, and pepper, and a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg. Um, and afterwards, we're going to add in also our sage to kind of give it a little bit of depth and flavor. And what we'll be doing is, is since we're doing a puree, we'll be using actually some coconut milk within that. So anytime there's any type of milk or cream substance, no matter if it's a milk alternative, um, we know the best method of, of preserving that is going to be freezing. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about how you can freeze this wonderful soup and save it for another day. We're also going to be talking a little bit about canning soup. So yes, you can can soups. Yes, you can can soups. <laughs> um, and how we're gonna do that is we're going to make a simple vegetable soup with the rest of our carrots, some green beans, tomato, corn, and we're gonna put that into a simple broth and basically make a broth with some of the tomato juice. And we're just gonna can it up like we would anything else. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So our focus today is gonna to be making and preserving these wonderful soups. All right, we're first gonna start off with our butternut squash soup. And this is super simple. Um, what you can do is you can always cook your vegetables either in three different ways. You can cook it in a slow cooker and let it kind of slowly cook and kind of get a little bit softer before you puree it. You can cook it on a stove top by sauteing them in a pan or having them kind of heated into the, uh, to the liquids you're using. But I love, the best way that I like doing it to get a better depth of flavor is to roast the vegetables first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in about half of our carrots. Because remember, we're gonna use some of these carrots for our vegetable soup. So I'm gonna add in, like I said, about half of it. And then we're gonna, of course, add in all of our butternut squash soup. And we're gonna mix this in a bowl so that we can add all of the seasonings onto it and have it evenly coated. We're also going to add in our apples. Now, you don't have to add any type of lemon juice to your apples just because we're cooking it down and it's gonna brown anyway. So you don't have to worry about it being already brown. Um, and then add in our onions as well as the garlic. And so to all of these things, I'm going to add in my seasoning. So I'm going to take my one fourth teaspoon of pepper, salt, cayenne pepper, a little bit, just a pinch of nutmeg, and also a pinch of our cinnamon. And we'll also add in our sage. So we're gonna add in two sprigs. And then after that, we're going to add in some olive oil. So I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of olive oil. And this is just to help it when it's roasting. And so I'm just gonna mix all of it up, get it well incorporated. Um, a really great way to do this is if you have a big container that has a top on the top, you can just put the top on and shake it up and it'll get everything nice and evenly coated. And so next what we're going to do is we're going to take a baking sheet 
and we're just going to toss and kind of evenly distribute them onto the baking sheet. And they're going to bake in the oven at 425 for about 40 minutes. All right, so we have one pan in the oven, but I'm gonna do this pan really quick and separating everything out. Um, and another thing I wanna mention, so for our butternut squash soup, we talked a little bit about how we're gonna use a liquid, a cream, kind of a creamy liquid. So we're gonna be using a cup of, um, a cup of coconut milk unsweetened into our puree, but that's when we're going to blend it together. We're also going to use two cups of vegetable stock. So these are going to make it kind of a little bit more smoother, a little bit more creamier, because even though we've softened our vegetables in the oven, we still need it to kind of be a smooth consistency. All right, so now that our butternut squash vegetables are roasting in the oven, we can get started on canning our vegetable soup. So like I said, for our vegetable soup, it's more simple and we want to keep it simplistic um, just to make sure that since we're doing pressure canning um, and since we have to follow safe canning procedures, we use just basic ingredients that we would use if we were canning any of these vegetables separate from each other. That means we're not going to use pasta noodles, we're not going to use any type of flour, any type of cream into this um, soup. That would be more so if you were doing a soup like a puree or a cream soup, we would do freezing. So, um, and that's just to make sure that there's no potential uh, growth for any, uh, any microbacteria or anything that could cause, uh, that could be a dangerous pathogen. So, like I said, we're gonna do something super simple. Um, I've got a pot that is boiling water right now. And what we're gonna do is add in our vegetables to this pot. And it's gonna boil for about, we're gonna have them boil for about five minutes. And so basically, the liquid is going to be our um, liquid that goes into the jars, along with some of the juice from the tomato. So when tomatoes typically cook down, they release some of those juices, which is perfect, because it kind of makes a delicious vegetable broth with it. So I'm going to turn this up just a little bit, mix everything up. Just to make sure everything's even. And like I said, we're going to give this about five minutes. You may remember from the last time some of the procedures I went through when we uh, did pressure canning green beans. So this time it's about the same, but we're going to use a different type of pressure canner. So this pressure canner is called a weighted gauge pressure canner, which means we're going to be using, instead of that Pepcock, after you've done your 10 minutes of steam release, instead of using a pepcock, we're actually going to be using this little dial. And the dial has um, specific weights on it. So it can be 5, 10, 15, kind of like when we see on a dial gauge, how we were reading the 5, 10, 15. So this time, we're going to use a weighted gauge, and we're going to put it at 10 pounds of pressure. So I'm going to put the, the weighted gauge at the notch where it says 10. And I'll kind of show you guys in a little bit what that looks like. Um, and as we go through, we just go through the same timing. Well, whatever timing goes with whatever you're canning. So for our vegetable soup, since we're doing pint jars, we're going to time the processing for 60 minutes. So we're going to use 10 pounds of pressure for 60 minutes. If you were to do this with a dial gauge like we used last time, you would do it at 11 pounds of pressure. Remember, same time, but 11 pounds of pressure for 60 minutes. All right, so now we're going to get started on our canning process. And so um, you, if you've seen our FCS at Home video for making green beans, it's pretty much going to be the same. Um, but this time we're gonna make sure that we have one inch of headspace. So we're gonna need one inch of headspace for our vegetables. We're gonna be using our funnel so that we can prevent any type of spillage because we wanna make sure that our jar ring and lid is perfectly clear, perfectly clean, so that we can put on our rings and our lids on there and it'll be a successful seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a scoop of our soup and we're gonna get more of the vegetables than we are the liquid. So I'm going to Scoop that in with our ladle. Next, we can add in our liquid. 
And so we're gonna use our headspace tool. So this is gonna help us to get to one, eight, one inch of headspace. So we're gonna use this top notch to sit onto the top of our jar, and then we'll measure the liquid that is touching the bottom step of the, of the tool. And after, we'll use the tool, turn it over, and kind of get all those bubbles out. So like kind of like go around the, the edge of the jar to get any bubbles out, because we want to make sure we don't have any bubbles. But I'm going to get just a good amount of liquid. Maybe a little bit hard, you may get a little bit more vegetables than liquid, but just do your best. If it ends up being a little bit more vegetables, that's fine. And I'm going to start with that step on there. Almost at one inch, just a little bit more. Perfect. So now that we're at one inch on our step, flip over our headspace tool and go on the edge and kind of just get any bubbles we can out there. And then we're going to put in our jar lid. So use your magnetic tool. Grab your jar lid, make sure it's dry, put it on top, and then take your jar ring and make sure that it is, everything's clean. Kind of get everything all that clean. And then we're going to put on our jar ring and hold our jar and twist it to fingertip tight. And clean a little bit off some more, and it is ready to go. So we're going to put this into our pressure canner just to sit in there for a second until we start our process, and we'll just get some more jars ready. All right, now that we're done with our vegetable soup being canned, we can now do our processing in our pressure canner. So we're going to be, like I said, using a weighted gauge pressure canner. This one is an All-American, and it's a little bit fancier. It has actually a dial on it, but what we're going to focus is on is the weighted gauge. So this one has numbers in it. Um, there's five, there's 10, there's 15. We're going to, again, use 10 pounds of pressure. So what happens is, is once we have that steady stream for 10 minutes, like we did with our dial gauge, um, we're going to put the 10 on top of our little, our little vent right here. And then we'll start with our processing time as we normally would for our um, dial gauge. All right, now that we're done with um, getting our processing done for our um, vegetable soup, we can come back to our butternut squash soup. So I've got all those delicious roasted vegetables and we've got them off the pan and into a bowl. And what we're gonna do is add a little bit into our um, into our blender. So you can either use an immersion blender, which it's one of those hand blenders where you can mix everything together. I'm actually going to use our regular traditional blender. Um, but yeah, you can use either or works. But I, what I like to do is to blend in kind of phases. So do a little bit at a time, and then we can add it back in. Um, we can add it into a newer bowl as we go. So I'm gonna take a little bit for right now, and I'm going to add in just a little bit of our coconut milk. And remember, this is gonna kind of make it nice and creamy. And then we're gonna add in our vegetable soup. I mean, vegetable stock, excuse me. Just thinking about vegetable soup that we're making this whole time. All right, we're gonna put our lid on. And we're going to turn on our blender and start maybe doing it a little bit low. And then going up all the way to medium. All right, so now that we have some of it made, I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of the process of preserving through freezing. Freezing is an amazing way to preserve things. You can already preserve things like your meats, frozen vegetables, any day, anytime. And what's best is it lasts for a longer amount of time. So for this soup, because it's cream puree, we're gonna use either a freezer bag, you can use either a freezer bag or you can use a ice cube tray. So you can pour in your soups into your ice cube tray, let it freeze over, and when, once it's done, add it to a double boiler. So we wanna make sure if we have a cream-based soup, you add a double of boiling water at the bottom of it. 
um, and then add it in there later on. And this lasts about up to four or, or more months, four to eight months. So everything looks really great and we can store it for fall for a nice cool day or cold day for the holidays. Maybe send it out to a family or a friend um, during this time where it's a little bit crazy for all of us as a nice little gift. Um, but either way, anyhow, way that you like to enjoy your soup, just make sure that you preserve it for your long um, fall and winter. Now, for any other tips, tricks, and recipes from our SCS program, visit us at our county extension website at union.ces.ncsu.edu. Happy harvest and happy canning this fall.